What's good YouTube? It's your man Rage King back with another one. Yes, another upload to the channel. And before we get started, like if y'all please go down there and hit that like button, hit that sub button, hit that share button, and hit that bell for notifications if you're new. Welcome to Rumble Rage TV. This is how we do Rage and Rebels. Crown up. And if you're new to the crew, welcome to the Rage and Rebel Revolution. Now let's vibe and y'all. We got to talk about this because I for one, I don't know about y'all, but Rage King himself is a person. That was looking forward to this game. I don't know why or why I keep having faith that I'm going to one day get a game in the modern era that's going to capture the same magic as Marvel Ultimate Alliance did. Oh, those long years ago when I was a teenager getting out of school and turned that damn Xbox on and had one of the greatest superhero experiences I've ever had in my life to date. When they came to Marvel Ultimate Alliance, I so missed that game so much. And after watching Crystal Dynamics literally rob me of that with Marvel's Avengers. Let me calm down and keep to the subject. But we're not talking about Marvel's Avengers or anything Marvel. Ironically enough, we are talking about a game that has marvel S tactics to it. But still somehow, someway found a way to drop the ball. And it's from the WB side this time. I am talking about one Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. We got the review here per IGN. Shout out to IGN for always coming through clutch for your Rage King man right here. So without further ado, yo, I'm going to stop running my trap and we going to get right into it. All right. Suicide Squad killed the Justice League review. I really want to love Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. I love Rocksteady's Batman Arkham series. I love open world superhero action. I've even had short but passionate affairs with looter shooters. Say that five times fast, right? But something about this particular intersection of all of those things just doesn't sit right. Whether it be the underwhelming loot systems, bland and repetitive mission design, or hollow post game, I just can't see myself wanting to play much more now that I've burnt, now that I've burned past the campaign story. That's a big problem for a live service game aiming to keep our attention for months if not years on end it's also a shame as there's a good story being told in a well-made in well-made cutscenes with snappy writing and performances carrying a lot of the weight beyond that suicide squad kill the justice league never consistently offers enough fun to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the successful games in this genre you know what that sounds a lot like, and it's a reason why I alluded to it earlier. See, it's always a reason why I say shit, right? You know what this sounds like. For those that were there for the travesty that was and were paying attention in the beginning of the video, this sounds literally verbatim like what happened with Marvel's Avengers Crystal Dynamics styles, not to be confused with Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Marvel Ultimate Alliance is what came out back in 06. Crystal Dynamics and Marvel's Avengers came out in, I want to say, 2020. Not to be confused. It literally sounds like the 2020 version of Marvel's Avengers. Literally verbatim. Go back and look on the channel for when I dropped, and I mean a heavily profan-laced uh, 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 review on that game. Look at all the multitude of videos I did on that game with not just me, but with a litany. See what I did there? Not just me, but with a litany, a long, long list of very unsatisfied and very pissed off customers and fans when it came to Marvel's Ult uh, when it came to Marvel's Avengers. See, I almost confused myself. When it came to Marvel's Avengers. And this right here, Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League, sounds like it didn't learn anything from its predecessors and continued the travesty and the bullshit tactics of not listening to the people and giving them what they want and simply not having an eye for talent and simply not knowing what the hell they doing when they come to games of this genre. Let's continue. While the comparison might seem like low hanging fruit, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League really is of a similar construction to and I'll be damned. I promise I have not read this before. I have not read this before. I'm reading this at the exact same time y'all did. It's of a similar construction to Marvel's Avengers, a game I spent dozens of hours enjoying despite its glaring deficiencies. They're both live services aiming to offer extensive post games, of course, in Avengers case, that promised 
service was cut that promised service was cut short when crystal dynamics shut down development two years after launch for rocksteady another famous single player turned online developer developer the first step toward trying to avoid a similar fate would be to create a compelling combat system that makes me want to return to suicide squad week after week but that's something it hasn't quite achieved at this point the studio known for revolutionizing tight melee combat with its Arkham games has instead opted to make it this a third person shooter, which is a bold choice, but one that doesn't make complete sense considering the traditional methods of violence implemented by most of Task Force S, aka the Suicide Squad. As far as the story itself goes, it doesn't take a brainiac to work out what's causing the Justice League to act out of sorts as they wreak citywide destruction with wide glowing eyed glee, with wide glowing eyed glee. Say that three times fast. Yes, traditional Superman villain Brainiac has hatched an evil plan to take over the planet and remake it in an and an image of his own creation and that involves controlling members of the justice league's minds so you'll never guess this the justice the, excuse me the suicide squad is called in to kill the justice league by any means necessary oh my goodness how bland what threatens to be a straightforward story fans have largely heard before branches out around the halfway point into interesting directions yes what have now become recognizable comic book cliches to do dampen some of the big revelations if you know anything about the end game you'll know what i mean but there's a level of storytelling on display here that harkens back to those arkham glory days that's in no small part thanks to the phenomenal character design work and script writing that brings each member of the cast to life as they successfully banter along that tightrope thin line between charming and insufferable and that is the end of that article and i'm going to say it again i really can't believe yes i can but if you would have told me i can believe it now because i've seen an experiment but if you would have told me 20 years ago when i was a little boy just playing his hearts out playing his heart out playing his favorite video games to his heart content if you would have told me 20 years ago Hey, you're gonna be a it's almost like a sick joke. Hey, you're gonna be able to get money and get paid and build a fan base and do all the wonderful things you want to do with video games, but there's a catch. All the games that you know and love now are going to be absolute dog shit when you are able to be grown and bomb on your own. That's a bar. Because that's exactly what's happening. What in the fuck? So, I, I, what I'm are y'all hiring the same fucking people that worked on failed games before and just hiring them to fill to fill a quota? Because at this point, that's exactly what it feels like. It feels like, oh, well, you failed at this game. Hey, why don't you come over here and make some more money to fuck this game up too? Why are we not hiring? Why are y'all not hiring? I say we because I'm on y'all side, developers. I really am. That's why Rage King is forever on your ass. Because I know y'all can do better than this. I know y'all can, but yet it's not being done. Please explain to me what in the fuck y'all got going on to where y'all literally will see a game company fail at doing the shit you're trying to do now at an earlier time. And then go and replicate the same shit that's going to fail. I'm not saying y'all making the game was going to fail, but the way you're handling it. Come on, bro. Yet another. Chalk it up as another one. Throw it on the wall. Yet another game, another AAA developed game that comes out and say it with me now, Raging Rebels. Broken, buggy, and unfinished. Every single motherfucking time. It's, at this point, it's like clockwork. Build hype up for a game. Make a game, and I'm using quotations with this. Make a game. Build the hype up on said game. Trick people into buying said game. People get game, play game, and realize game is a bunch of bullshit. Rinse and motherfucking repeat. I'm so sick of this shit. I'm tired of seeing it. Specifically from AAA game company developers, bro. But that's just my opinion. That's the end of my video. Hope y'all enjoyed. It's been a pleasure making it for you. And I will catch y'all in the next one. Goodbye.